Ave Maria Purissima. This is Father Daniel Couture. Welcome back to this series of talks on Our Lady. We have seen in the previous talk, we have started to see this uh, truth of the mediation of Our Lady, how it is the truth that we need today, and the devil knows, hell knows, we know that we need that doctrine to be proclaimed loud and clear. I remember Archbishop Lefebvre saying that before the council there were large groups of Protestants who were willing to convert to Catholicism. They were just waiting for, for the grace. And they were, after the council, they were told, don't convert. It was, it was a total spiritual disaster. And the battle at Vatican II concerning Our Lady was clearly on, on, this, on this doctrine, Our Lady's mediation, but it was not ecumenical, which was the line of the council. Therefore, they put the doctrine out. They did not speak about it. And ever since, we rarely hear about it in the in official document. We never, never hear about it. They, they just reject it. They deny it. We have seen briefly the encyclical of St. Pius X, beautiful encyclical. Get a hold of it. It's, it's a wonderful text. Ad Diem Illum, February 2nd, 1904, in which he, he takes the doctrine of St. Louis de Montfort and turns that into an encyclical, where he speaks of that union of Jesus and Mary, such that every grace that Jesus merited out of strict justice, Our Lady also merited. That's powerful. So let's continue our study of her role. I will use the image of a triptych. You know what a triptych is? It's like a painting with three panels. Sometimes you'll have, let's say, the, the crucifixion, and you have maybe Our Lady on one side and St. John on the other. You'll have maybe or the transfiguration with Moses and Elias, this three-part uh, work of art. So our triptych will have three parts. On the left, we have, on earth, we have Our Lady co-redemptrix. We have Our Lady alive, Our Lady united with our, with our Lord, as St. Pius X said, community of will, of suffering, of love, of life. Our Lady meriting the graces. The middle triptych is Our Lady in heaven, in heaven interceding for these same graces, asking for them later in the history when we will need these graces. And the third triptych is then the distribution of these graces at every moment of history. We have spoken quite at length with, at the, of the first part, Our Lady co-redemptrix, Our Lady of Sorrows, Our Lady of Compassion, united with our Lord Jesus Christ. I just remind you one quote of Prophet Isaiah 49, 16, where Isaiah said, he, they have, or God is saying, they have engraven uh, their name in his hands. They have engraven. The word engraven is translated different ways. Like, it can be like plowing a field. It's more than writing, it's carving, it's digging it in. And St. Augustine says, well, the parchment was the skin, the ink was the blood, the pen was the nail. So when the nail went inside the wounds of our Lord in his hands and in his feet, he was, he was in the carving, he was sculpting, he was marking our name in his wounds, and at the same time, in the Immaculate Heart. Because when these nails went in, these hands, they were going in her heart at the same time. So, that's the merit of these graces. Because where, where do the graces come? Well, they come from God, but 
They can be given, but they can be also merited. Now, let's speak more of the second panel of our triptych, Our Lady in Heaven. Our Lady in Heaven. What do we know in heaven? That's the first question we need to ask. What do we know in heaven? We will know everything that will make us happy to be out of vision. We'll see God, the Blessed Trinity. We'll see Our Lady. We'll see the saints, the angels. But what about the things on earth? Say, parents go to heaven. Do they know what is happening with their children on earth? A bishop goes to heaven. Does he know what concern his diocese? Or a pope, a founder, St. Dominic, St. Ignatius, St. Francis, do they know what's going on on earth concerning their congregation, concerning the church? So the answer is, we will know in heaven whatever we need for our happiness, whatever we need to know for our happiness. Otherwise, the happiness would not be complete. So let's apply this to Our Lady. If that applies to us, what about, what about Our Lady? What does Our Lady know in heaven of what's going on on earth? Well, we have said Our Lady is the new Eve. When Adam saw Eve, he said, you are the mother of all living. So she's the mother of mankind at the natural level. And if Jesus is the new Adam that restores, restores mankind by his sacrifice to, 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 to the possibility to go to heaven, well, Our Lady is the new Eve, a helper like unto himself. And so she, if she's the new Eve, she's the new mother of all living spiritually. So she's appointed by God to be the mother of all the elect. And since everyone on earth can and go to heaven, has a possibility to go to heaven by the grace of God, therefore she needs to know everything about everybody in order to be happy. So she needs to know her family life, she needs to know her our body, it starts with the body, our health, our sicknesses, our infirmities, our accidents. She knows all this. A mother cares for the body of her son or her child. Her, she needs to know the, the needs of the soul, the, the sorrows, the sadness, the difficulty, anxiety, problems, uh, desires, wishes. Our Lady, the mother, wants to know what her child wants. Our Lady knows that. She knows our temptations. She knows our efforts in virtue, our, our sins. She knows it all. <clears throat> First thing, excuse me. <clears throat> she knows it all. Now, what does a mother do when she hears the need of her child? What, her, what does a mother do? She she runs. I remember once in, uh, it was in Ireland. I was eating with a the family. They had two little girls, twins. And they were about two years old at that time. And we we're just having coffee at the end of the meal. The girls were gone to play. And all of a sudden, a, a cry of death, mommy. One of the girls just shouted for her mother. And the mother just sprang like, like, like a spring. It was just jump and, and ran to like, if there was a, she met a lion or something and the mother just came back walking oh she, she saw a spider she saw a spider it was the first spider she saw but for me watching that mother uh, reacting to a cry of her child you know revealed the, the love of a mother but if that's a if that is the reaction of a, a natural mother and any mother would react to the, the cry of her child, as we said in our previous talk about the lady, the mother in Nagasaki. How much more Our Lady, how much more Our Lady will move when she hears our cries in this valley of tears? What, what can she do when a mother when a mother hears the cries of her child like this one, well, I said, she, she jumped, she, she went, or the lady, the mother in Nagasaki, she just pulled the last 
strength she had, the last minute of breath, and to save the life of her child. So Our Lady goes to her son. She goes to her son to ask for the graces. She's the omnipotentia suplex, as the, the writers say, the all-powerful suppliant. She's, whatever she asks, she can obtain. Let me use a, another image. Think of a little, in a little village, there's a little bakery shop, and the, the father is the baker. He's known as the, the shop of Mr. Mr. Smith. And, but Mrs. Smith, she works with him all the time. He gets up at 2 o'clock in the morning to bake the bread and the cakes and everything. But she's there at the counter. She's the one dealing with the customers. She's selling the cakes and the bread and, and all the, the goodies that he makes. So, but he's the one paying the taxes and, and dealing with all the bills and everything. But she's working as much as he is because she's, she's selling the goods that he's making. It's a, it's a teamwork. It's a couple's work although it's officially in his name. But he would not be able to, to distribute all his goods if he, she was not there. So something like this. And so imagine the, the, the mother of the baker, Mrs. Smith, going to see her husband and say, honey, I need, I need a bit of money to buy clothes for the kids or I need to go to the pharmacy, he's sick. The husband knows that she has worked long hours with him to earn the family money, the family income. He cannot say, no, no, this is, this is my money. I'm, I'm earning this money. He would not do that, obviously. So when Our Lady goes to her son to ask for graces that we on earth, we need, Jesus cannot say, no, no, I've earned these graces, not you. Because Our Lady says, well, I was there. I, we worked together. As St. Pius X said, it was a community of life, of sorrows. They were one in saving this world. And so that's why she obtains. So on earth, we call her co-redemptrix, the first panel, co-redemptrix, Our Lady of Compassion and Our Lady of Sorrows. In heaven, she's the mediatrix. She's the, she's the uh, intercessor. She's the advocate. She's the advocate. So she pleads our cause. She gives all the reasons to obtain that grace that we need on earth. And now we come to the third panel of the triptych. So first you earn the graces. You put them in the, the divine bank, in the treasures of God. And then when you need, you have to ask for them. That's, that's what Our Lady, Our Lady does in heaven. And now there's the distribution. Now she got the grace. Now she has to give it. It's in her heart, but she gets permission to deliver it. And that is what we have to understand also, because she, at one point I forgot to say, why did Our Lady at Fatima ask so much for us to say the rosary? Because you have these words in the rosary, pray for us, pray for us, hundreds of millions of times people on earth are saying, pray for us, pray for us. So that's calling to Our Lady as advocate, as mediatrix. Blessed Mother, please give us these graces that we need ourselves, for our family, for our country, for the world, for the whole church. And Our Lady is asking because she says, I cannot, I cannot, ask my son for, unless, unless you say please. I cannot ask graces unless you have asked sufficiently. If you remember the story of Esther, the story of Esther when Mardacus, her uncle, says, you go and ask the king and you, God has put you there to save your people and if you don't do it, God's going to put you aside and someone else will save his people because we are his people. And so Esther said, okay, but I want you to pray for, I think it was three days, and pray and make sacrifice fast, and after three days, I will go and talk to him. And she herself fasted as well. And then she went, and she obtained, because the, 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 the king said, well, Esther, ask me anything you want, even half of my kingdom. 
So, same thing with Our Lady. She needs these millions of Hail Marys said fervently so that once there's enough, like enough penny in the jar, she can go and see our Lord and say, look, my son, they've prayed all these rosaries and may I have it, this grace. The conversion of Russia, the consecration of Russia, all these things, the conversion of the world. She has in her Immaculate Heart all these graces to convert everybody in the world. And so there's the distribution. Once we ask for this grace, then when she has obtained it, when she has the right to, the, the permission to give it, then she turns to us and she gives the grace. All the graces. The grace to fight every temptation. The grace to, to, to practice every act of virtue. The grace to become saints. The grace of baptism. The grace of making good communions, good confessions. All the actual graces and also an increase of sanctifying grace. She has all the graces in her Immaculate Heart, but she can only give them when we say, please. So that, my dear friends, is what we have in the Hail Mary, in that simple prayer. There is there's treasures of grace. And our triptych in three parts, I'm not sure if you caught it, but we have or Hail Mary, full of grace. So that's when she, she merited more graces to that that she had received already at her Immaculate Conception, at the Annunciation. She, she merited an increase of grace by her union with our Lord. And then we say, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. That's the second triptych, the second panel. Please talk to your son. Talk to your son for us. We need this, 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 this grace. And then now. Pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Now. What does now mean? Now means now. This second. Well, next second, there'll be another now. Another now. Now is every second of our lives. That's for everybody on earth. She has in her Immaculate Heart every single grace that corresponds to everybody asking Our Lady, now. Imagine if everybody on earth said, now, Blessed Mother, pray for me now. Here, I have it. I have everybody's grace. I have everything. I've merited all the graces with my son for all of you, my children. That's the power of Our Lady. And that's why she's asking for these rosaries and these Hail Marys, well said, always. She's asking for this because once you say this, I will give you these graces. I will give you these graces. Even the graces of the sacraments. You see, as Our Lady is, the, the Father Garrigou Lagrange says, she acts a little bit like a sacrament in a sense that the sacraments, outward signs instituted by Christ to give grace. So in order for the baby to receive the grace of baptism, the priest takes the water, pours the water on the head and say the words at the same time with the intention, the baby is baptized. Grace has come. We see in the life of our Lord, our Lord, the, 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 the blind man, you know, the, the blind man, the lepers, whoever, the, the sick people, they came to our Lord, they wanted to touch him. A virtue came out of him, St. Luke says, and was healing them all. There, there was a physical contact and, and grace came for those who had faith. That woman who touched the hem of his garments, who had this, this uh, who was losing blood for, for many years. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be cured. So there's something physical and then there's, there's also something spiritual that Jesus was a, a, an instrument of grace, obviously. Grace was going through his humanity. But Our Lady as well. Our Lady as well. It is when she said, hello, shalom, to her cousin Elizabeth, that John the Baptist moved into Elizabeth's womb, probably prostrated himself, because Elizabeth said, when I, the voice of your greetings hit my ears, when I heard the voice of your salutation, the child leaped with joy in my womb. So the voice of Mary. We have at Cana, our Lord did the miracle of the water into wine when Our Lady says, they have no wine. 
she had to intervene. When uh, at Pentecost, she's with the apostles when the Holy Ghost comes. In the, uh, in the life of St. Therese of the child Jesus, if you recall, when she was 10 years old, she went through a very mysterious sickness. She was so sick, she was losing her mind. She was becoming insane. There's one moment where she, she stood on her bed and she dove on the floor head first. She, she was becoming insane. They did not know what to do with her. And one day, the statue that was next to her window smiled at her. Our Lady smiled, and Therese was back to normal. She smiled at me, and Our Lady of the Smile. At, uh, at Lourdes, just a few years before, when after having seen Our Lady one time, Bernadette was going home with one of her friends, and as they were talking about the apparition, and Bernadette says, I, by the way, you know what? At one moment, the, the beautiful lady, she looked at you. And the girl said, what? She, she, she looked at me? Yeah, she looked at you. And then she continued to talk to me. That look of Our Lady was enough to, to change the life of this young girl who became a nun later on. She says, wow, the mother of God looked at me. But that's what we say when we say the Hail Holy Queen. And Turn thine eyes of mercy towards us. Blessed Mother, please look at us. Have you never seen, have you never seen a, a mother with her, her children when the child wants something, a two, three-year-old child? I've seen it once in, the, in Singapore where I was there. We were in a restaurant and we were, at the end of the meal, the children were moving around and the little boy came and he, mommy, mommy, mommy. And the mother was talking with someone else. And, and, my, and I was watching, because I, I love this, this uh, children and mothers, like, like we're talking now. I was watching, and the mother was talking. I said, I was wondering, can she not hear her boy? He must have said it 10 times, mommy, mommy, mommy. And then after a while, it did not work. He took her face in her hands, in his hand, he took her face and he turned her face towards him. Mommy, I'm your son. Look at me. I need you. That's what we say in the Hail Mary, in the, in the Salve Regina. Turn thine eyes of mercy toward. Blessed Mother, you are my mother. Don't you care for your son, for your daughter? Look at me. Because your look brings life, brings light, brings grace. That's the Hail Mary. Pray for us sinners now. Blessed Mother, look at me right now. I have financial problem. I have health issues. I have a job problem. I have study problem. I have problem with my little brother who took my little toy, maybe. I don't know. I have problem now. I need your help now. Or the church needs prayer. The Pope, said, when the Pope says now, it's powerful. So let us pray. Let us pray for the church. Let us pray for the conversion of the world. Let us turn with great confidence. Let us go to the throne of grace with great confidence. Adeamus cum fiducia ad tronum gratiae, says St. Paul. Let us go to Our Lady, the Immaculate Heart. She's the throne of grace, and we will obtain all these graces that we need if we persevere in humility and great confidence. God bless you all. Ave Maria Purissima. Thank you. Oh,